This video is going to cover what the book calls the lump sum principle. It's going to talk about something related to taxation, a point related to taxation that we can make using budget lines and a difference curve. So this is in part a way to show you how powerful these tools are in helping us add to our understanding of the economic world. So I'm going to start with the diagram drawn up here. It's a little bit tricky, so I, I, I took time to, to draw this ahead of time. So what we're going to look at is... Um, uh, the case of a tax that could be imposed on a commodity versus a, a, a tax that could be imposed on income. You know, we, this is really where you, the, the lump sum uh, principle. If you take public finance, there's even a more detailed uh, meaning to the idea of a, a lump sum tax. But for our purposes here, it would be as if you'd uh, be taxing uh, income instead. And so what I've drawn here is an initial budget line that a person that would have before the government imposes any tax. Now, we're not all that concerned with that because that's sort of like what would have uh, that, that would have been the, the status quo or the situation before we have taxes. And what we're going to compare are two different taxes. So I haven't drawn an indifference curve for that. The government's imposed what's known as a commodity tax. And so in this case, I think of it as tour, the example I'll use is tourism, because you often see high uh, taxes on such things as resorts, uh, rental cars, uh, the, the types of things that, that uh, tourists coming into a, a community would be using. You can tax those pretty heavily. And uh, local residents often think like, oh, well, this is a way to get our, our government services paid for by people who are coming into the community. But the point is that this is going to be a tax that's placed on this good. Now, there's a little bit of complication behind this uh, that, that we don't want to get into. But let's just suppose that the tax, uh, the tax ends up increasing the price of this good. So that we've shifted the budget line or changed the budget line to represent the fact that it's as if the price of tourism has gone up, and that's because we've got we're imposing different taxes on tourism. And in this diagram, I'm using a little bit of a trick here that's kind of nice when we want to have a, a graph focusing on one good and we're not concerned about the other good. I've uh, labeled the the y-axis good as money spent on all other goods. That gives us a very convenient way to think about. You know everything else that that uh, you know, everything else that this person uh, could be spending money on without worrying about what well, what's the exact other good. And this also, since this is a tax, it gives us a way to be able to to measure quickly the the tax revenue that's being co collected. So, the tax on tourism has the effect of increasing the price of tourism. So we know that that's going to uh, make this budget uh, line steeper. We'll keep the same uh, y-axis uh, intercept, so the budget line simply becomes steeper. And I've drawn in the indifference curve for which we're going to have a tangency point uh, uh, with, with the tax in place. Now we want to compare two different taxes. So this is the commodity tax that has distorted the price uh, of tourism by uh, boosting it, by in effect uh, being passed on, on to uh, consumers here. Now, the government needs to raise revenue, so what we're going to do is say, well, suppose we could compare this commodity tax with a tax on a, a income that would raise the same amount of money. Okay, so how do we decide how, uh, well, what would be a tax that would raise the same amount of money? Well, here's where we can use the fact we put money on other goods here, and we can compare the BL2 with BL1. And... If we look here, X1 is the amount of tourism, and let's and and then with uh, tourism, you get Y1 of other goods or money spent on other goods. So then, what we could say is that suppose you were going to buy X1 uh, a quantity X1 of tourism with your original budget line before you had to pay the tax. Well, if you uh, how much uh, other goods could you get? Well, you'd go take X1, go up to the budget line, and over. And then give it something like this. You know, I'll put why not there. So here's the, here's in effect the extra amount of other goods that you could get, given the amount of tourism that you buy once we have the tax in place. This is the amount of other goods you could have had with your original budget line. That's what, in effect, you're giving up. That's what's going to the government. So this is the tax revenue. 
So if we want to look at an equivalent income tax, we'd want to have an income tax that's going to take this amount of revenue from the from our, our consumer here. Um, that doesn't mean that we're doing that really just sort of to say, you know, for, for better or worse, the government needs this revenue or the, or the politicians believe they need this revenue. And uh, we're going to compare two different ways to raise this revenue and, and try to argue that the uh, lump sum or income tax would work better. So if we had a lump sum tax or an income tax, it would have the same slope. We, what we wouldn't be doing is we wouldn't be distorting the price of tourism. We wouldn't be putting a, a tax on commo a commodity tax on tourism and distorting the, the tax of tourism. So we have the same slope for the uh, BL1 budget line. And we need to make sure we collect the uh, amount of revenue that we're collecting with our uh, commodity tax, our tax on tourism here. So we want to draw a budget line that's parallel to BL1 and goes through this tangency point here with U1. And so I'll try to do that here as carefully as I can. Um, maybe exaggerating a little bit because I want to be able to make sure that the uh, that we can sh show the point here. So here's BL3. I've driven it, drawn in this um, budget line. Um, and, and again, it's it's um, parallel to BL1, so I'll put uh, our little slash marks through it here. And it goes through this point here, so it's collecting the same amount of revenue as our commodity tax. And then we can say, okay, if our consumer faced budget line BL3, where would they maximize utility? And what we can see is that because BL3 is flatter than the indifference curve U1 at this tangency point, the tangency point for BL3 would be somewhere over here to the right of, of UL1. That means, you know, somewhere around here, I'll draw a, another a, um, indifference curve in here, and it's going to come in and be tangent right about there. And that's going to give us U2. And I draw my marker here. And so we're going to have a, a tangency point here. Now, the exact quantity of uh, tourism and, and other goods that, that uh, the person purchases here uh, isn't all that important. The one thing we can note is that they would end up consuming more uh, tourism with budget line BL3, that, that's just tax, take the, uh, um, tax their income as opposed to raising the price of tourism. That's a substitution effect, so we shouldn't be too surprised by that. But let's see, more importantly, the with the budget line BL3, our consumer here will get to a higher in utility indifference curve than they did with the commodity tax. And this allows us to make a statement that to say that that commodity tax is inefficient. Why would we say it's inefficient? Well, because um, the government can collect the same amount of revenue with these two different taxes, the way we've got it set up here. So we've rigged it completely to do that. So the, the government is not hurt, is, is, is as well off with the income tax as they would be with the commodity tax. And the other person of relevance here would be the, the people in the, 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 our consumer who is in effect paying the tax. And we can see that the consumer is better off. They're, they get to a higher indifference curve than they would have uh, with, with the commodity tax. So the consumer that we're looking at here is better off. The government gets the same amount of revenue as they would have with the commodity tax. And so as we'll see, what we'll, uh, we'll call in Chapter 10, we'll introduce this, and, and uh, this will be the idea of Pareto efficiency or Pareto optimality. What we can say is that the, um, the lump sum tax would be Pareto efficient, and the commodity tax is inefficient. It's inefficient because there's an alternative way. There's an alternative way you could have collected as much tax revenue uh, so the government's not harmed, not made worse off, and this uh, this person could have a higher level of utility than we do with the commodity tax. So this is a, an important point, and it, it really illustrates the point of, of that uh, you don't want to distort prices with uh, government policy. When government policies distort prices, 
we get extra inefficiency. So you want to, the, the, the sort of a principle for government policy we can get out of this is, is the idea of try to distort prices as little as possible. Uh, of course, there's some real limits to that. And if, if you want to learn more about that, you can take a class in, in public finance where they'll talk about some of these limitations with the taxes further. So but this is the lump sum principle, and it, it's a, an interesting thing to see. And, and again, it sort of shows the, the power of, of this uh, budget line and difference curve diagram to really sort of allow us to extend our, our, our analysis of an understanding of uh, policies, and in this case, a tax, that we see in the world. Okay.